Okay, what's happening everyone? This is the overview video for the food truck financial model. I'll go through each tab, explain all the inputs, and we'll go from there. Uh, note, the food truck model was one of the first templates I ever built. It was like number uh, within the top five or so, first five. So a lot of upgrades here based on all the new stuff that I do in, in my models. Um, the main upgrade was to add uh, financial statements, which is interconnected income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. As you know, I've been doing this upgrade to all templates and we're through our top 50 so far. Also, I added a cap table and capex schedule. So that includes depreciation in uh we also added a dynamic exit value uh, based on EBITDA multiple. Uh, distributions tab was added with a discounted cash flow analysis. Executive summary tab was added. And um, the annual details updated with all the new data. So here we go. You can start off with the global control tab. You define the company name, define the launch year. Note, if you change launch year, make sure you go through all the yellow tabs and any drop downs with dates. You make sure are updated um, so they're not starting earlier than the launch year or later, depending on what this number is for you. Uh, you can also choose when you want the model to end. It goes up to 10 years. It's an annual only model. So here we go from 2021 to 2030, and you can pick any year to be your exit year. Uh, on the exit, you can choose if you want to uh, have the terminal value populate in cash flows or not. The only reason this is important, or the main reason, is to do a proper discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, you could choose the EBITDA multiple, trailing 12-month EBITDA will be multiplied by that to get the exit value. Uh, cash sources, so here you could define if you're going to fund some of the startup costs with traditional debt um, or equity from investors and or owners. These will all be defined on the cap table itself. You can also uh, apply a tax right here. And there is income tax and long-term capital gains based on uh, if you put the terminal value anything less than 100%, the, the difference will go to be applied to fixed assets, and a tax will be calculated based on that. Uh, finally, here at the bottom, we've got sanity checks to make sure everything is all always balanced. These should always be um, zeros. We move to the revenue assumptions. This is mainly defining how much revenue your food truck is making. You've got up to three ranges. Um, year ranges and you can define in each of those ranges what's your average sales per day what's your average order value and how many working days per month are there now you could extrapolate this if you had expansion plans and you could you would increase the daily sales based on that and your average order value based on that changing for cost it's very simple i just did three main percentage costs uh, food costs labor costs and other costs gas license insurance and you can define the percentage of each of these of revenue. So a little top-down style there. Uh, go to CapEx, here's where you can define, you know, if you're buying the food trucks, you would put them here. If you're, per if you're renting the food truck, you would put it over on the revenue assumptions. It'd go as part of this percentage here, and it'd be rental fees, but most of the time, you know, startups are probably gonna be buying the food trucks and then you've also got equipment that's going in the food truck, so you can put the cost basis, the useful life, and that all will populate with uh, depreciation logic. The top rows, usually I do this for building, but this is just for another food truck. You could define the value of that specifically at sale. And that's going to just, the only relevance here is for cash flow and tax purposes. Startup cost, this would be anything that's not counted elsewhere. Legal fees, you know, maybe initial product inventory, licenses, website, just, you know, miscellaneous startup costs that you're going to have to purchase to, to get going. Cap table, this is where, so the whole model will solve for the minimum equity required. And that'll be based on startup costs and any burn. And you could define who's contributing this equity between outsiders or and or insiders and what share of the company they're getting over here you got fully diluted ownership value we've also done it uh this kind of or internal rate of return and cash flow calc for each individual as well as in the aggregate
uh, terminal value. I went over that. It's just showing basically these three numbers are the, the three values coming into the terminal or exit proceeds. That schedule, this is just if you're going to borrow any money, um, it'll, the logic here is for principal and interest calcs. If you do include, if you hit yes on the include terminal value, this will automatically pay off any remaining principal on the exit year at the end of that year. So if I were to put no here, it just goes into perpetuity. And let's say we put, you know, 2026. and put this to yes. You now see payback in tw year 2026. And that all flows dynamically. Let's put this back 10 year. Income statement, we just have, you know, food sales, food costs as our cost of goods sold, um, gross profit, then our operating costs, startup costs, total operating expenses, EBITDA, this is basically the cash flow the business is producing um, before interest and taxes, depreciation. You've got interest, depreciation, taxes, and then net income per year. We've done this for the, uh, we've done a balance sheet as well, so this, these are all connected. So you've got your cash balance, you've got your uh, non-current assets like the food trucks, the equipment, the accumulated depreciation, total assets based on that, long-term debt, uh, owner's equity based on what was contributed, and then retained earnings and always assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So we're all checked there and that makes sense. Balance sheet's an ultimate sanity check. Cash flow statement, this is how we're figuring out our cash balance on the balance sheet. So it's all operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Annual detail, this is basically the same as the executive summary, but this is the original. I'll ju I just copied it because of that, but it's just showing revenue, some detailed costs. Uh, everything here you can see on the income statement as well. Uh, well, actually, it has a granular, more granular detail for uh, these costs. Um, but we got taxes. We also have capex, and we drive down the cash flow. And also, we created the internal rate of return calculation based on this is the financing, initial financing, less capex, less startup costs to figure out the initial period zero cash flow, and then period one is then just operations. Debt, less debt service, less taxes, and then plus exit proceeds. And that number, this 494, is checked against all the other schedules um, to make sure it balances, which it does. Executive summary is a little bit more cleaned up version of the annual detail revenue, gross profit, um, just high level item for OPEX, salaries, wages, uh, EBITDA, debt service coverage ratio. This is an important one. Um, that metric's not relevant. And then other cash flow items, total cash flow, uh, cumulative cash flow. So see that 494, 197 matches here, matches here. And then we've got also the project internal rate of return, equity multiple, and then for the investor side and owner side as well. Distributions ones where we have a discounted cash flow analysis for the project as a whole figure out net present value based on the cash flows. Also for the investor and owner side individually, you can do a net present value calc. And you see here the net present, the internal rate of return is the rate to apply to get a net present value of zero. So if I copy this here and paste it in here, you see that net present value goes to zero. So that's the importance of how internal rate of return and net present value are directly related. Then I did just one visual cash flow shows the individual cash flows each period and then the accumul accumulation of that over time. And you can see here we're basically breaking even between year six and seven on the initial equity requirement. All right, and that's it. Uh, check out more at smarthelping.com and I'll see you guys on the next one.